Welcome to Adapt Inclusion. Thank you for deciding to watch this video. As I've said multiple times, the NCLEX is all content-based. If you know your stuff, there's no questions that will beat you. You'll be confident to go take the exams. You have to find a place where you can master your content. This is Adapt NCLEX. We're going to do newborn NCLEX questions. These questions are hard. It require concept, concepts that you need to know for to take the exams regarding newborn. I will show you the way they will trick you. The answers look the same, but you got to be careful. If you need more, this is where you can get most of your content, adapt and close channel membership. Let's get to it. First question, like I said, content-based strategy, how to approach these questions. Um, what do you need to do, right? Which finding will require follow-up, really from the back? You know they're, doing, they're saying something wrong. And next is assessing a 12-hour-old newborn. There's a reason why there's a time. What do you expect? Therefore, if I see a newborn, 12-hour-old, and I assess him, there's certain things I should be able to see and say certain things I should worry about. They gasp and, and they gag, and then they spit up clear mucus several times. As soon as they're born, all the meconium, and then they've aspirated all the and fluid they absorbed during birth, they will try to get rid of it so you can help with suctioning them. And this is where the kid will do it. They try to gag and spit things out. This is okay. A yellow sclera in 20, less than 24 hours is a problem. This is what? Join this. A join this that is less than 24 hours is pathological. If it's more than 24 hours, it's physiological. As I go through these questions, I'll be giving you content, 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 content. So pay attention. If you have a note, keep on writing them. But I use my questions to give you content, right? Swelling across the suture line over the scar. This is expected, right? This is a, according to CS, the secumen uh, uh, capitus, right? Capital secumen. This is the, exactly the same. It's expected as you had a baby, um, the mommy, and through the going, the baby going through the pelvis, or the pressure will cause problem. And then they will have hematoma that will cross suture line. So this is all expected finding. And as I said, it's called, is a, uh, the, the, the word is in, already done so that you can see next time you know what it is. It's capitals, that's the head, right? And then it's succeeding, right? So see Daniel. This is normal for this newborn. It's expected finding. You don't need to worry about it. Um, then heart rate of 180 beats per minute when crying. Yeah, you have to know the normal. So the normal is 110 to 160, right? When they are awake, when they're crying, it can go to like 180 to 190 or something like that. If they're sleeping, it's between 80 to 110. So this is normal, this is normal. Which one you need to, um, we need a follow-up, it's yellow sclera. This is join this, that is not good. Number one is done, right? Next question. Which action is a priority, prioritization? You got to be sharp. That means not expected finding. Look for the non-expected finding. And if it's not something you're looking for, which action is a priority? Which one will provide better information to the patient? And then scares for it, six-year-old, uh, six-hour-old newborn with the blood glucose of what? 39. This is bad, right? Who is alert? So a newborn, glucose less than... 45, 40 to 45, anything less than 40 to 45, this is hypoglycemia for them. So 39 is hypoglycemia. Then you ask yourself, the next thing you do, does the patient have symptoms? I told you he's alert. So therefore, if he's alert, use his mouth. Aura. This is the same thing you do for adults, right? If they are hypoglycemia, see if they have, they have signs and symptoms related to hypoglycemia. If they are awake, use their mouth. If they are not awake, then you use IV or IM. This kid is awake. I said it's alert. It's a buzzword. That's what you focus on. Key aspect. These are you can answer question. Don't focus on the 39, but focus on is alert. Who is alert? That means it's a symptomatic. Talking to the doctor is irrelevant. It's not a priority, right? Giving them IV dextrose, patient mouth can work, right? So instruct the mother to feed the kid. You don't need to give them glucagon. 
if I'm not going to give you IV, I'm not going to give you IM medication because your mouth work. It doesn't make sense. This is the strategy your body will try to play tricks in your mind. They look very enticing to pick them, but no, don't pick them. Go with the buzzword. It's a light and hypoglycemia. Use the mouth. Number three is good. Let the mommy feed the baby. And if it doesn't respond, yeah, we have to give them uh, something IV or IM. Select and apply. You don't have to pick everything. Pick those you're confident. Which finding the next you expect on assessment? Expected finding. Be sharp. Don't pick something that you know is, is not expected, right? And next is just assessing a one-week newborn, okay? It's one week, seven days old, right? What do you see? A big toe does a flex when after so, uh, so a stroke upward. This is Babinski. Babinski can take up to three months. This is okay. The head turned to the right and the mouth open when you stroke the right cheek. So the baby turned towards the right when you stroke the right cheek. This is called rooting, right? It's a suckling, right? And suckling uh, um, reflex or rooting, basically. They're ready, rooting for food, right? They're ready to take the food. So they think this is what happens when you're trying to breastfeed them. It's, they think breast is coming for them to get food. So this is suspected. They open their mouth and turn towards that. Their fingers cross, curls, and wrap around an object. This is palmer grabs, like very, very hard. At, by the age of three months, they should let go a little bit. One week old, anything you put in their mouth, their hand, they're going to grasp it really tight. The tongue pushes forward and out when you touch the tongue. The same thing, excrucian uh, reflex, right? You pull your tongue out when you touch it. This is suspected, right? Um, right arm and leg extend. Look, both arm and leg extend on the right side, but the left side, they flex it. When you turn the head towards the right, this is designed to prevent the kid from falling, right? This is a reflex that you design, asymmetrical reflex, that right? is a reflex designed for the kid so that they don't fall. So they, when you turn their head, in order not to fall, they decide that they turn into, they have flex, is extension of the ham and the leg, and the other side will flex. This is all expected. That's the king strategy, content mastering. All of them are normal. It's expected finding. So you got to choose up. Number four, which side the nurse should prioritize for the injection? The same thing. Which one you're going to prioritize? You got to be sharp, right? And nurse is ready to administer. It's not dying, right? Uh, or it's a vitamin K. It's a vitamin K derivative for kids. When they're born, they need vitamin K. They don't have bacteria in their guts to make vitamin K to prevent bleeding. They, we have to give them IM or oral vitamin K. Does medication need to be administered? Therefore, which route you think is the best? I give you all muscles. So I never give you oral form. These are all muscles. This is a kid. The next thing you tell yourself, where do we give IM medication in the kid? This is test taking strategy because all of them muscle. The kid, the deltoid is not developed. The ventobrutal will cause injury to the nerve. Right, the dosoglutra will do the same thing. The best way is vastus lateralis. So vastus, if they don't give you vastus lateralis, look for anterolateral tie. That is the same thing. Number three is your answer. Same thing. I give you when I do cases questions a bunch of selected apply. So you go take your an anchors. You feel comfortable. It's like oh, I've seen a bunch of. Uh, Select or apply on adapting class. So if you knew this is the first time, look down, you see the subscription and, and subscribe to adapting class. You get more content like that, or you join our uh, uh, on demand or our in membership and learn how to master your content. Which finding the next you expect? Select or apply. And next is assessing a newborn 24 hours after vacuum assisted. This is content delivery, right? I just want to give you content. There's two types of assisted device that you should know uh, when and delivery. It can be forceps or vacuum. This happens during uh, stage two of labor when mommy is tired, baby is not doing well, mommy cannot push anymore, exhaustion, and we can assist the mother. A vacuum is a suction device put on the head and it sucks the baby as the doc, the air care provider 
help with the delivery of the baby. The forceps is the forceps, like a forceps with a two prong metallic object put on the baby's cap. There is kind of specific injury you should know. You can cause hematoma on the head with the suction. This is the caputo, this is caput, we should say caput secundum. So caput secundum. This is what I was talking about. Hematoma crossing the suture line, right? So this is what you expect. The kid will have four four feeding. This is blood, right? It can lead, uh, the baby will be irritable because of the hematoma and the head. Um, the skin is going to be yellow because this caput secundum, the uh, bilirubin get released from the hematoma and the skin will turn yellow. There's no going to be facial laceration, no scalp laceration, no subgaleo hematoma, and then no high pitch cry, right? This is what? This is what? High pitch cry is a neurological problem. So that means the baby is having an issue, right? Facial laceration, scalp laceration, subgalian is associated with the forceps. So don't forceps is a metallic. It can cut the, the, the scalp, it can cut the face, it, it causes subgalian, it could go deeper. But when the vacuum is used, it's less traumatic. So they have capital secundum, you have four feeding irritability and yellow. So one, two, three, four is classic for vacuum assisted device side effect. Um, and then facial scab, really uh, subglaria and uh, right is form of neurological problem, which is more common with a, a faucet delivery. Number six. Which finding is concerning? Select or apply. And this is assessing a 12 hour old newborn. What do you expect? It's a newborn, less than a day old. Although systolic, systolic mama is suspected, it may be patent ductus arteriosis or ventricular septal defect. These are first 24 hours. It takes time for all these small, small um, congenital defects to close. So it's suspected. The heart rate of 130. Like I told you, normal heart rate when they are awake is 110 to 160, and it goes to 180 and above when they cry. Respiratory rate of 40, usually they have respiratory rate of 30 to 60, and usually irregular. So this is also um, good, right? This is also good. We cry is not good. We cry, something is going on. They can have apnea, but the apnea should be less than 10 or 15 seconds. So this is not good. Apnea 50, greater than 50 seconds is bad. Blue is discoloration of the hand and feet. This is a peripheral cyanosis. This is acry cyanosis. That's okay. Therefore, which finding is concerning? Bad ones. Let's clean it again. So the bad ones, this is not a bad one. This is not a bad one. This is okay. We cry is a bad one. Period of apnea is a bad one. This is not a bad one. So four and five are your right answer. Yeah, actually, which one is concerning? Which finding will require follow-up? Select or apply. So sometimes I uh, try to go with the good answers, then go back to answer the question because sometimes you can you can be it can get confusing. So you have to find a strategy how to do that. It's a select apply. Which finding require follow-up? So something bad we seen one hour old, a capillary glucose of forty-five in a one hour old is normal, right? 40 to 60, it's normal. That's the normal glucose in a newborn, right? So this is normal. So I would say yes, but it doesn't require follow-up. Small, low set ears require follow-up. This is not normal. We need to follow up on it. Diaphragmatic breathing at 60, they usually do abdominal breathing, which is the same as diaphragmatic breathing. And a, a respiratory rate of 60 is fine. So this does not require follow-up. Apical heart rate of 100 when asleep, right? So 80 to 110 is when I rest, therefore no problem. Temperature of 97 is too low, hypothermia, right? Anything 97.7, below 97.7 is bad. So this require follow-up. Triangular shape posterior fontanelle. The posterior fontanelle it has a triangular shape like that, right? And it's the smaller one. So this is normal. The diamond shape 
anterior fontanelle is the bigger one, right? It's diamond shape. So this is bigger than this, and it's diamond shape, anterior fontanelle. This is normal. Therefore, which one should require follow up? Is a low, small, low set eye, uh, ears, and the temperature of that. This is okay. Diaphragm breathing is okay. Act rate of hand rate is okay. Posterior fontanelle triangular, anterior uh, fontanelle diamond is okay. So the answer is two and five require follow up. Number eight. Which finding is concerning? Same thing. Which one should you worry about? Concerning, right? And this is assessing a 12 hour old newborn who has central cyanosis. When it says central cyanosis, that means the, the, the middle portion of the body, right? Acra cyanosis is the legs and the hands. This is acra cyanosis. This is good. Central cyanosis means there's a long or heart problem, a congenital problem, like tetraoidy or foli. Therefore, this is, um, is the problem. Apnea, I told you, it should be less than 15. If it's tw 20 seconds, it's too long. Nasal flaring with the respiratory of 4, 70. Respiratory is 40 to 60 normally. 70 and the nasal flaring is bad. Granting, intercostal muscle contraction, they are all bad. Abdominal breathing is okay and acrid cyanosis is okay. So one, two, three, four. As you can see, newborn stuff is content specific. You don't have to memorize, but you have to know the facts. Number nine, if you need more, check out that thing list. I have a lot of OB and I have a bunch of them on the um, on demand or the membership. So check it out. Select and apply. Which statement by the mother indicate teaching is effective? That means they're doing something good. And then provide teaching to a new mother of a five-day-old infant, one week old, a discharge regarding sudden infant death syndrome. What teaching associated with it? This is common in newborn, placed in a prone position, and they die all of a sudden. There's certain things associated with it. There's a risk factors. There's a way you can prevent this. One, no soft mattress. Mattress has to be hard so that the baby face doesn't go down on the mattress. Yeah, so which teaching is effective? This uh, teaching is not effective. I will have bumpers in the crib to prevent injury. Bumpers cause more injury. They don't prevent injury. So this is ineffective. My child can have a pacifier during napping for sleep. This is good. Kid can have pacifier. It prevents sudden infant syndrome. I will employ a wearable blanket. Okay, this is sleep sack. We call it sleep sack. It better, it's better than a bunch of blankets that can wrap around the kid face and cause suffocation. So, uh, blankets, they can wear it and it covers a certain portion of their body, provides some warmth and without suffocating them. So this is good, effective. Indicate teaching is effective. I will make sure that vaccination is good. And there should be no loose feeding, toys, stuff, animals, pillows. All this is going to suffocate the kid. So these are all the things indicating effective teaching. Three, four, five, and six are all effective. And the last one, number 10. And this is assisting a, a new mother with breastfeeding a newborn. Which action by the nurse is appropriate? So he's going to assist. What do you want to do? It's better to call lactation team. They have they can provide specialized teaching. You can teach them, but you, there's nothing wrong consulting them to come and help with that. You have to assess the child how much is suckling, whether he's ready to do it. Provide teaching. Mommy have to know how to use the pumping device. You got to assess mommy their willingness to about the breastfeeding, and help the mommy position the baby in optimal. These are the things you can little things you can do, and watch the mommy breastfeed and correct them as needed. Thank you for watching. I hope you gain something. Master your content and keep charging no matter what. Never stop charging. And as usual, once again, thank you for watching. If you like the video, you can share with your friends and subscribe to Adapt and Plus. Get more content like this. Join our membership or our on demand. Or you can join us on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Wednesdays on YouTube, Saturdays on um. Zoom, the link is on the first portion of the uh, video. Take care of yourself and have a good day.